Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDR Insider. And today I'm gonna to be showing you the new Perfect Effects 9.5. This is the beta version. It's not quite released yet, but I'm going to be showing you some of the cool features that have been added to this. And we're going to be taking this lens flare and making it look really great, almost as if it fits perfectly because by itself, the lens flare can be pretty potent. Then we're also gonna be showing how we can get this kind of dual looking vintage effect with this nice cream glow here, but then these nice vintage kind of blues in our black areas. So I've got a lot of cool stuff to show you. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Perfect Effects 9.5. This is the beta version that I'm working with now. It will be out in a couple of weeks. But one of the things that I want to show are the luminance maskings that they've added to this. It's actually a really powerful feature. So oftentimes I get asked, where exactly do I use plugins in my workflow? One of my favorite places to use the plugins in my workflow is after the digital and color zone systems, which is my typical workflow that I use of choice to get my image to look like this. So we've got a tone mapped HDR image, goes through Adobe Camera Raw for some preliminary stuff, goes to the digital zone system for tone, color zone system for color. And now I'm at the point where I could probably save this and call it a good image, but now I wanna work with the creative effects. And that's uh, Perfect Effects 9 is a great place to go for that. So what I can do is go to file, go to automate and go to perfect effects nine. When you open perfect effects nine, it's not going to look any different from 9.5 is not gonna look any different from 9.0. The only really way that you know is if you go to help and go to about perfect effects photo suite, and you're going to see here that we've got version 9.5 is loaded. So the, one of the filters that I want to use here that's, that's new to Perfect Effects 9 is the Lens Flare filter. It's a really cool filter, but it's very powerful and almost uh, too potent by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on right down here after you do the Lens Flare filter. You could obviously go over here and use one of the presets. I prefer to build my uh, Perfect Effects uh, workflow from scratch and just build filters from the right hand side. Oftentimes you'll even see that I have this closed over here. So what I'm going to do is just click on this little sunburst right here that says use this tool to set the center of the light source. So what I'm going to do is bring the amount way down and bring the size down quite a bit. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me like a pinpoint measurement as to where this sun flare is going to be. So I'm going to grab this flare. And I'm going to put it right here where I want that sun to be. And if it doesn't exactly line up, you can just click it again until it lines up where you want it to be. And now you can increase the amount and you can increase the size. And again, it's a little bit off. So I'll just click a little bit above here and just until I get it right where I want it to be. And it's probably because my camera is off. So if I click right here and grab my camera source, I can put my camera right here in the middle of this image. And that might make it a little bit easier for me to pinpoint exactly where I want that lens flare to be. And that's about right, right there. So after getting that nice and set up, you can see that it's really blowing out and it's flaring out. If you make this amount larger, if you show the rings here, uh, it really can get pretty, pretty bad here um, because it looks too much. It's just too much happening too quickly. Let me change my angle of my camera to somewhere over in this direction. As you change the angle of your camera, it will change the angle of those rings. And those rings are just a little too much. So what we need to do is drop our amount down. So I'm gonna drop the amount down to something pretty low, about 11 or so, and then bring the size way up. And what that does, it really makes those rings kind of push themselves pretty far back. Now the color style I'm gonna choose here is going to be this oatmeal color. I really love the way this oatmeal color looks with this. And then I'm going to adjust the amounts accordingly there. And I really only need to go up a little bit on these amounts, maybe not much at all, and just kind of leave them almost at their basic settings here. That looks about right there. Because if I go too much with the amount, we just get too much of that oatmeal color in the image. So I'm gonna just leave that around 32. So in looking at, at this, it's still pretty powerful. And this is where luminance masking is going to come in. You can get to the luminance mask in a couple of ways. You can go up to mask right here and say create luminosity mask, or you could right click here and say create luminosity mask here. Now, if you press the O key, O is going to give you a view of what this mask looks like. And if you go down here to the preview, it's going to be mask in red. If I change this to grayscale, it'll show me this mask in grayscale. So basically what this is saying is that anything that's in the lightish gray is not being affected. Anything black is not being affected at all by this lens flare adjustment. And anything in white is getting the full treatment from this lens flare adjustment. So we can see just by this that it's still a little too 
bright. So let's drop this layer opacity quite a bit. And that's also going to help take some of the color out of our rings. So I'm going to drop that layer opacity and it's almost good. So let me go ahead and look at that again. Still a little too powerful. So right here, what I can do is go to apply to, and this will allow me to apply this to a certain area. And what we really are trying to do here is get this lens flare to look like it's supposed to be there. So really what helped us there is the luminance mask that did a, a lot of work for us up front, because typically with masking uh, before you would brush in those areas, whereas this is allowing us to use the luminance channel of this image to make a mask on there. And it's a very powerful way to do that. So now if I go to apply to, I can make this just to the neutral areas in my image and not make it apply to everything. So if I do this just to the neutral areas and then we can select our range, we can bring our range up quite a bit here. And you can see the difference between the before press control Z to undo and then control shift Z the after it's a little bit cleaner now. And even here we have more protection measures we can put in place. So I'm going to protect our highlights just a little bit bring that up to about 29. I'm also going to protect the shadows so that they don't get as affected. You can see the change here, especially in the waves when I protect my shadow areas from this uh, all all out kind of lens flare that we have going on here. And then skin, skin would typically be uh, our skin tone colors if we were working on a portrait or our mid-tone areas in this image. So I don't wanna bring that up because I'm losing pretty much everything there. So I'll leave that protection the way it is. So here's the before and here's the after. Now we can really bring this a little bit further if we add a new layer and change this filter to sunshine. I think this lens flare and the sunshine work so well together that they're, they're almost meant to be together. So again, what we're going to do here is we're going to adjust our amounts first, and then we're going to do our lumin luminosity masking for this one as well. So with this one, I'm going to go ahead and bring the amount up. Let's see what happens there. Uh, it's a little too bright when I bring the amount up. So let me just move the warmth up. So when I bring the warmth up, what you see happening here is the waves are getting this nice, warm, overall color on them, which looks really great for this image in particular, because we've got this lens flare here. And now we've got that lens flare warming up that water as it passes by it, which actually works really well for this photograph. And we can even bring up the saturation quite a bit here too, because what we're going to be doing here in a second will make all of this look a lot better. So what we need to do is go up here, we're going to right click and we're going to change this to create luminosity mask. And then again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to apply this, but we're only going to apply it to our midtones. All right. And we can also adjust the range accordingly, but we can also do is protect certain things. So I want to protect my highlights 100% or 64 in this case, and protect my shadows all the way up. And I can even do some protection measures for these skin areas there, because in this particular situation, it does help to block those midtones a little bit. So you see our overall before, and our overall after. This is doing some really interesting stuff and a lot of it is being held right there in that luminance mask because if we look at this, this luminous mask, once again, the luminosity mask is basically saying anything white you're going to affect and anything gray you're gonna partially affect and anything that's black you're not going to affect at all. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and press apply to that and we'll use another uh, image to show some more stuff with this luminosity masking. So here's our after and here's our before. So even the before image was good, but our after image just has that, that lasting effect on it and it looks pretty good. So now we're going to use this image and we're going to create an antique effect on this. So if I go ahead and go to file and go to automate and go to perfect effects nine, I'm going to jump in here and get some luminosity masking going on this image as well. What I'm going to do here is two different antique filters. So I'm going to, I've got the empty layer here. I'm going to go ahead and go to filter and go to vintage. So it's going to be this vintage antique type of look. So when I click on that, it's automatically going to have me defaulted to certain colors here. The first one I want to do is going to be a red yellow. So this red yellow feature, you can see it's, it's, it's kind of overpowering the entire image and putting too much of this color grading on the entire photo. So what can I do? Right click, create luminosity mask. So now this one has a much more potent luminosity mask than the image we saw before. So if we go to our grayscale, you can see there's a lot more gray here and a lot more black here and a lot less white than we saw in the last one based on the luminance channel of this image. So I'll just go ahead and leave all of these pretty much the same here and I'll go ahead and create a new filter.
And with this new filter, I'm gonna create another vintage filter. And this one, I will use the blue to yellow. Now, I'm also going to make a luminosity mask here. So I'll right click, create luminosity mask. Now I'm gonna press Command or Control I. So this one is going to affect the opposite. So now I've created this luminosity mask for the first one that has uh, this area selected here. And when we invert it, we can apply a different kind of vintage antique effect to the rest of the photograph. And then we're also allotted all of those same resources here where we can protect certain areas if we would like to. Uh, this one, I definitely wanna protect the shadows just a little bit because you can see in the corners, this blue is really vibrant. So I'll protect that a little bit in those blue areas. And then this one, uh, let's see if maybe I wanna protect those shadows from some of that uh, yellowish effect also. So when I go back, I have this nice kind of matte looking vintage effect that has pushed and pulled my colors with the color grading with these luminance channels being selected. Without these luminosity channels, this wouldn't be possible in this particular occasion. So where I see these fitting in, I see them fitting in very well at the end of my creative workflow. If you happen to use Perfect Effects strictly for your workflow, this is a great addition with those luminosity masks. My name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDR Insider. And if you like this, please share it, comment on it, keep the conversation alive. This new Perfect Effects 9.5 is going to be a great addition to your workflow, no matter where you see it fitting in, whether it's at the end or it's at the beginning or it's something you see all the way in between. Thank you very much for watching.